No matter how advanced you are with any software, there's always a possibility that you may be making mistakes while using it, or at least not using it to its full potential. So today, let's go through five mistakes you may be making with Affinity Designer. All right, here we go. Mistake number one, recently just opened Affinity Designer and this little window pops up. So how many of you hit close and then go up to file and new? Because that's mistake number one. I know personally, I do this all the time. I'd hit close, go to file, go to new, when easily I could just hit new document right here. So basically there's two things that you can do here. Either start using new document because it just makes sense. That's why they put it there. Or you could head over to this little tick box over here and stop this panel from showing up when you start up. In which case then, this panel won't show up and you can go straight to file and new. It just makes sense. So if you're making that mistake, it's a lot more efficient to do one of the other two things, either hit new document or don't let this panel show up and go over to file and new like you normally would. All right, onto mistake number two, which is not making Affinity Designer your own. What I mean by that is that all of these panels can be moved around, can be docked in different areas, can be put wherever you really like them. You want, you could have them floating around the windows like this. It's all entirely personal preference. One person's studio isn't always gonna look the same as another. So if you're finding that you're always searching for a specific panel or you can never find where a specific panel is, make sure you dock it in a place that you prefer it, where you're always gonna have access to it. And remember, you can always save what your studio looks like as well. You can have different studio styles for different activities that you're gonna be doing. And just as easily, you can switch between them with a small shortcut. So this is my default. And this is where I like everything and I know where everything is. I've set it as that shortcut, which if you head over to view down to studio presets, my default is that shortcut. So you can add your own presets and set your studio up how you like it to make it fit for you, seeing as you're the one that's going to be using it. And that quite smoothly brings me on to number three, which is not customizing the toolbar. So if we head over to view down to customize toolbar, we can actually customize this top toolbar with any of these tools that we want to use. So if there's anything specific that you constantly use or you want certain things in different orders, we can literally drag and drop these and put them where we want. We have these little spaces here so you can take them out and make things go even closer together if you really wanted to. So you've got loads of room there to actually customize where you want your tools. But also, if we head over to view and down to customize tools, we can customize the toolbar on this left side. Like for example, how many of you are actually using this zoom tool when you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse that you can zoom in and out with, or you can even head over to the navigator down here and you've got a zoom bar here as well. So really how many people use that? If you don't, I don't, I'm just gonna get rid of it. And all you do is drag it off. Similar with this hand tool or view tool as it's called. I don't use it, drag it off. However, what I do use is this frame text tool and the artistic text tool, but I do find it annoying having to go into this little sub menu and having to grab which one I want because it's never on the one that I want. So instead, I'm gonna get rid of that. And you can see up here, we've got three options for the text tool. We've got the one with the little arrow at the bottom there, which is the one that opens up the menu, or we've got these separate. I'm just gonna drag this and put them both on the menu bar there. So now I can choose which one I want a lot easier. But not only that, Affinity Designer has this tiny little line as well. You see that tiny little line? Which can be used to separate different sections of your toolbar. So if I wanted to, I could separate that. I could separate these just like that. So easy just to space it out, just to make the toolbar your own. So you can customize not only the panels that are in your studio, but also the toolbars and where your tools are to again, make things easier for yourself. All right, onto mistake number four, which is accidentally rotating the canvas. Now imagine you're working away at doing something, you're making your shapes and whatnot and choosing your colors and you know, you're making a great design and then you decide to zoom in. And for some reason, your hand chooses to zoom holding Alt rather than Control. Now, when you hold Alt and use your scroll wheel, the canvas rotates, which when you do that, it's really annoying because then you want to get it all the way back and you've got to get it perfect. And it's just something that you've got to think about. Now, there's two ways we can stop this happening. One is to stop your hand choosing Alt instead of Control, which might sound easy. Or if we head over to Preferences down in the Edit menu, head over to Tools, you can now disable Alt and scroll wheel being canvas rotation. So now if I hold Alt and scroll, it's the same as what it would be if I was just scrolling regularly. So it means that you're just less likely to make that mistake and have to keep unrotating the canvas. Trust me, that was annoying when it kept happening to me. I'm glad I found that tick box. 
All right, and lastly, the fifth mistake that you may be making is not utilizing artboards properly. Now, artboards themselves are amazing. So if you want to learn more about them, make sure you check out this video up here. But just to go through it really quickly, if let's say you are making something and rather than making a big change to it, what you can do is select the artboard just by clicking on the artboard name there, holding Alt, and you can just drag another artboard, which is a complete duplicate. You can also hold Control and drag it as well, which keeps the artboard locked to the guidelines as well if you really wanted to. But now what we can do is if we were going to make a major change we can make this major change on the new artboard and compare both and then instead what we can do is if we were going to make another major change copy that over make another major change and then again make another major change let's maybe add a new shape in there there's a color send it to the back and then maybe we're going to make another change and change the background color to something else but what's great now is that not only can we step back and see the progression of what we've designed but we can also take things from different artboards. So instead, maybe we're like, oh, you know what? I liked it to the point here. Maybe we'll make this one. And instead of it being a square in the background, make it a circle. And now we can compare them both again. Maybe we like the circle, but we like the color of the, the square. We can duplicate it again. Grab this, change it to the color of the square. There we go. So you can actually see the progression of how it goes. The undo function in Affinity Designer is amazing, but being able to compare things backwards and forwards is a lot better. And artboards, are beautiful for this and the best thing so make sure you do check out that artboard video and one of my favorite things is to be able to see a timeline of what i've been making because then you never know months weeks years down the line you look back if you only had that and that was your final design and you'd be like hang on how how did i make that why what colors did i go through did i even try a different color and you won't be able to go backwards and do undo and even if you did there is always the possibility that you might move something and lose all your progress because you've undoed so far back but instead if you have everything available you can see oh i did try red i did try pink or oh, we changed it to blue and you can see the progression of everything and it works amazingly so yeah artboards there you go five mistakes that you may be making with affinity designer let me know how many of these you've been doing down in the comments below and also comment below anything that you've been doing wrong this whole time and only recently realized if you have any questions make sure you drop them in the comments below and while you're down there don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more videos like this if you haven't already make sure you check out this video right here and as always i've been brown bear thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one